Hello. Uh, good and blessed morning po sa lahat. And pasensya na po at uh, hindi ko lang gagawin ko dito. <laughs> Marami kasi akong, I have got so many things in a, uh, uh, my son called it uh, my script. So I need to fix my script so I won't be, get lost. Yeah. Um, good and blessed morning po to everyone. I've got, uh, I can't see you with these glasses because I'm using my reading glasses, so I have to keep on on and off so I can see you properly. Otherwise, you're all blurry to me. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So, yeah, uh, I will follow uh, Trevor's advice to get a bifocal lens next time, so I won't be, I'm not going to take it on and off anymore. Yes, uh, once again, thank you for coming. Thank, um, we're glad to see you back again in our church. You know, this past, this past two weeks, we were not able to use the hall because of some incidents. Uh, most of us, two weeks ago, uh, most of our brethren uh, have fallen ill and we are not able to come. But thank the Lord, we are all better now. Yeah, most of us are better now. Thank the Lord for giving us good health. And last week, uh, still, we are not able to come to this church because of the annual car show where they use the uh, outside hall, outside field, and they use this hall as well for uh, some uh, refreshment uh, site. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, God is good anyway. We found a new place to hide. We <laughs> found a new place to camp if, uh, because the Chesil Beach now is not... Uh, uh, free to stay all night unless you are fishing. Yeah, <laughs> unless you are fishing, make sure you have a fishing rod with you and a small tent where you're not supposed to sleep. Yeah, you just need to stay there so that uh, it will cover you. Yeah, I'm just making it long because I prepared a very short, uh, <laughs> very short uh, message. Yeah, yeah. Um, the title of this uh, at first, the title of the. Uh, this message that uh, I'm supposed to prepare, uh, somehow uh, the message that comes, uh, that, wish, that somebody whispered to my ears that it's called light bearer. Yeah. So I search light bearer. When I search light bearer, Google it, it will show up Lucifer. Yeah. I, you know Lucifer. Means it means light bearer. So I asked Lord, Lord, I'm not gonna make my brothers and sisters listen to Lucifer, make my friends, my brothers and sisters Lucifer. So I come out with a, I ask, I, I bargain to the Lord. So I change to light of the world. Amen. It's uh, based on Matthew chapter five, fourteen to sixteen. Anyway, before we start, can I ask uh, everyone to pray with me so that I will not be nervous. Yes, Lord, uh, thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful day that you've given to us once more, that we are able to use your church once more. This whole, Lord God, that we are able to come in your presence, Lord God. We pray that you are uh, on the all corners of this place, Lord God, and uh, bless us, Lord. And uh, whatever we're going to say today, what are the words that we have prepared for, you, for my brothers and sisters, Lord God, may I ask again once more, Lord God, that you may cleanse it. Sanctify it, Lord God, that we will be able to use it in our daily lives, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that uh, uh, as we listen to these words, Lord God, we may be able to listen it carefully and keep it in our hearts, Lord God. And forgive me, Lord God, for any uh, uh, things that I have done wrong in your eyes, Lord God. Everything, Lord God, in my thoughts, in my minds, in your actions, Lord God. I ask for forgiveness, Lord God, that I may be worthy. Uh, uh, to give this message, Lord God. Use me as your mouthpiece, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Yes. Uh, it's light of the world. Uh, but before anything else, just like I said, uh, I'll make this longer. We'll just uh, talk to each other. And uh, I'll... I'll j I, my son... I'll, actually, I found this one already. I've read this online already. And my son uh, showed me again yesterday. And I want to read it to you. It's about a story of a student and a professor. Yeah, I'm just going to read it to you. So uh, uh, there's a part in this message that is uh, on this story that it's part of the message anyway. This is between a professor and a student in a classroom. 
So the professor asked this student, the student is Christian, you know. You are a Christian, aren't you, son? The professor asked the student, and the student said, Yes, sir. So you believe in God? The student answered, Absolutely, sir. The professor asked again, Is God good? Of course, the student will say, Sure. Is God all-powerful? The professor asked. And the student said, Yes. The professor said this one, My brother died of cancer, even though he prayed to God to heal him most of to heal him. Most of us would attempt to help others who are ill, but God did not. How is this God good then? Hmm? So the student was silent. Then the professor said again, you can't answer, can you? Let's start again, young fella. Is God good? The student answered again, yes. Professor asked him, is Satan good? The answered, no. Professor said, where does Satan came from? From God, said the student. That's right, said the professor. Tell me, son, is, the ev is there evil in this world? The student answered, yes. Professor, evil is everywhere, isn't it? And God did make everything, correct? Yes, said the student. The professor said, so who created evil? The student did not answer. Then the professor said this again, is there sickness, immorality, hatred, ugliness, all these terrible things exist in the world, don't they? Yes, sir, the student said. Then the professor said, so who created them? Again, the student had no answer. The professor said, science says you have five senses. You used to identify and observe the world around you. Tell me, son, have you ever seen God? The student said, no, sir. The professor again asked, tell us if you have ever heard your God. No, sir, the student answered. Then the professor asked again, have you ever felt your God, tasted your God, smelt your God? Have you ever had any sensory perception of God for the matter, for that matter? No, sir, I'm afraid I haven't, said the student. Then the professor said, yet you still believe in him? Yes, the student said. Professor Adena said, according to empirical, testable, demonstrable protocol, science says, your God doesn't exist. What do you say to that son? The student said, nothing, I only have my faith. Professor said, yes, faith. And that is the problem science has. Then the student said, professor, is there such thing as heat? The professor said, yes. And is there such thing as cold? The professor answered, yes. The student answered, no, sir. There isn't such thing as cold. Then the entire chatter, the entire classroom became very quiet with this turn of events. The student answered, uh, said this one, sir, you can have lots of heat, even more heat, super heat, mega heat, white heat, a little heat, or no heat, but we don't have anything cold cold. We can heat 458 degrees below zero, which is no heat, but we can't go any farther than that. There is no such thing as cold. Cold is only a word we use to describe the absence of heat. We cannot measure cold. Heat is energy. Cold is not the opposite of heat, sir, according to the student, and according to science as well. Just the absence of it. So there is a pin drop silence in that classroom. Then the student continued, what about darkness? This is about our topic right now. What about darkness, professor? Is there such thing as darkness? The professor answered, yes, what is night if there is no darkness? The student answered, you're wrong again, sir. Darkness is the absence of light. You can have low light, normal light, bright light, flashing light, but if, you have a light cons but if you have no light constantly, you have nothing and it's called darkness, isn't it? In reality, darkness, yes. If it is, well, you would be able to make darkness darker if there is such thing as darkness, but there's not, no such thing. So the professor asked, 
So what is the point of you making, what, what is the point you are making, young man? Sir, my point is philosophical premise is flawed. Sir, my point is your philosophical premise is flawed, according to the student. The professor said, flawed, can you explain how? The student answered, sir, you are working on the premise of duality. You argue that there is life and there is death, a good God and a bad God. You are viewing the concept of God as something as finite, something we can measure. Sir, science can't even explain a thought. It, is use, it uses electricity and magnetism, but has never seen, much less fully understood either one. To view death as the opposite of life is to be ignorant of the fact that death cannot exist as a substantive thing. Death is not the opposite of life, just the absence of it. Death is not the opposite of life, just the absence of it. Now tell me, professor, do you teach your student that they evolved from a monkey? That's the question from the student. The professor said, if you are referring to a natural evolutionary process, yes, of course I do. Then the student asked him again, have you ever observed evolution with your own eyes, sir? Then the professor shook his head with a smile, and beginning to realize where the argument was going. The student said again, since no one has ever observed the process of evolution at work and cannot even prove that this process is an ongoing endeavor, are you not teaching your opinion, sir? Are you not, sci are you not a scientist but a preacher? So the class was in uproar. The student asked him again, is there anyone in the class who has ever seen our professor's brain? The class broke out in laughter. So the student said this one, is there anyone here who has ever heard the professor's brain, felt it, touched it, or smelt it? No one appears to have done so. So according to the established rules of empirical, stable, demonstrable protocol, science says that you have no brain, sir. <laughs> and you didn't see it. So with all due respect, sir, how do you then trust your lecture? How do we then trust your lecture? So the room was in silent. The professor stared at the student. His face was unfathomable. Professor said, I guess you have to take them on faith, son. Yes, you have to take them on faith, son, sir. The student said, that's it, sir. Exactly. The link between man and God is faith. That is all that keeps things alive and moving is our faith. Amen? Amen? Amen. Yes, that's the story. And according to this one, the student was Einstein. So, we cannot argue with that. <laughs> that's, that's Einstein. So, we go back to our... So, how long did I miss? Oh, just a few minutes. So, we have some more. Don't worry, I just prepared uh, only 59 minutes to be exact. 59 minutes and one hour. So it's not so long. Uh, yes, uh, <clears throat> Light of the World, uh, Matthew chapter 5. Huh. It is left click. There. Matthew chapter 5, 14 to 16 says, uh, this is not working on far now, Gabriel. <laughs> you are the light of the world. A town built on hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it and stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your God, your good deeds, and glorify your Father in heaven. I'm sure, my brothers and sisters, we are all, we have all experienced to be in the dark. Yeah, uh, there are a few kinds of darkness. We need to uh, explain what is darkness, anyway. As as the story said, what is darkness? Darkness, yes. Darkness is a partial or absence of light. Darkness sometimes also uh, often convey negativity, evil, death, or the unknown. Some of the most studied literature contains symbolic uses of darkness and light. And if you watch Star Wars, if the enemy goes to the other side, they are on the dark side. Yeah, they are on the dark side. Uh, let the force be with you. But it's not a force, it's the spirit, the Lord. <laughs> There's a, 
just like wickedness or evil, the forces of darkness. And uh, there are typical, uh, different types of darkness. We have the physical darkness and the spiritual darkness. Uh, just like what we have heard, physical darkness is uh, the absence of light. You cannot see anything. We all experience blackout, brownout, especially in the Philippines. Here, we don't normally get them, yeah? They are very good here, so there's not much blackout. But because of uh, the increase of uh, bills and everything, we'd rather be in the dark than to pay a lot of bills. But our bills is getting higher, yeah. My bills soar high, soaring high right now. And um, there is also this kind of darkness where you don't know what is happening. And they keep you in the dark. Just like if they uh, have a press, uh, surprise for you, your family keeps you in the dark and you don't know anything. And then you open the door and then surprise, that's in the dark. And there are also this uh, darkness where... Uh, a lot of people knows about everything, but you don't know. That's one kind of darkness. They keep you in the dark. And this is spiritual darkness. It is a state of a person who is living apart from God. So this is a spiritual darkness where they don't have any relationship with God or they don't have any fellowship with uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, a lot of people right now are not only in a physical uh, darkness, but also in spiritual darkness. Yes, they are living apart from God. Some don't have relationship with the Lord, and some of them have a relationship with the Lord, but they just ignore Him. Some of them uh, already knows the truth, they know the light, but they decide to go on their own way. They think they can do better without the Lord. And they want to be in the dark because they want to do something that nobody would like to see. That's what you do if you are doing something bad. You don't want anyone to see. You be stay in the darkness. So because if you go to the light, they will see what you are doing. Yeah. Uh, some people are misled by other people. Some false teachers right now. We know that there are a lot of uh, teachers right there. Some religions right there who are misleading people. They, they are saying that they are uh, taking you to the light, but really they're putting you into the darkness because they are keeping you in the dark, whatever the truth is. Yeah, so this happens. A lot of uh, false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Matthew chapter 24, 24. Yes, even the elect, they say. Even if you say that you are strong Christian, you are mature Christian, you know what's from the start of the Bible and to the end of the Bible, you read the Bible. But Jesus said, even the elect can be deceived. So if you are not worried, if you are not uh, careful, if you are not careful, you can be deceived. Jesus came to earth when this earth was in darkness. Remember, those Pharisees are leading those people into the darkness because they are doing what they just want to do, not according. They, are do, they know the law, but they added some of the law to make sure that they all also have those. Uh, they want to be uh, on the high as well. They want to be on the highest will, not Jesus Christ. John 12, 46 said, I have come into the world as a light so that no one, no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. So Jesus came here on earth because of the darkness of this world. Yes, we need light because of the darkness of this world. Not only because it's really dark, there's no light because it's really dark. <laughs> light. We know, we've learned about the, light, uh, the darkness. The darkness is the absence of light. So, what about light? What is the meaning of light? Light is something that makes vision possible. It makes you see. Makes you see. Light is used to convey something positive, goodness, life, or hope. And life also has different kinds. Same as the darkness. We have physical light and we have spiritual light. And physical light also have two types. Physical light have two types. First one is the natural one, 
natural light, and the other one is the artificial one. Natural light is just like the sun. And uh, artificial light is like your lamp. Some says as well that the moon is a artificial light because it has no light in itself. It's just reflecting the sun's light. Yeah. Uh, when we were born in this world, we know physical light. And that is very good because by that physical light, we've learned the Creator's handiwork and the things that He has done. So we've found out about His creations. Without this uh, physical light, we cannot see the creations of the Lord. Spiritual light is used to symbolize God, faith, and holiness through the Scripture. As Christians, we are called not only to walk in the light, but to be the light for others. That is our main scripture for today from Matthew chapter 5, 14 to 16. You know, it just came to my mind that uh, we are called as the light of the world. You know, Jesus Christ is the groom, and we as Christians are the wife. Yeah? Diba, maybe we have a saying that ang, ang ina ng tahanan ang ilaw. Ang <laughs> ilaw ng tahanan ang, ang mothers are the light of the home or ang ilaw ng tahanan na ang ina ang mga mag, ang mga daddy ang haligi ng tahanan is that right <laughs> yeah <laughs> the mummies the wives are the light of the tahanan uh, light of home while the pe uh, well the daddies are the pillars of the home so just like here, we as Christians, we are called by the Lord to be the light of this world. Amen? Um, so, my brothers and sisters, how can we be the light of the world? How can we be the light of the world? John 8, 12 says, When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So if we follow the if we follow Jesus Christ, we can also have the light. Amen. Amen. Um, so my question is, are you a follower of Christ? Parang walang sagot Are you a follower of Christ? So are you a light of this world? Yes, let me ask you this one more time. I hope you don't mind because when I was preparing this question, just like Pastor said, when you're preparing the message, it will hit you first. How deep is your relationship with God? Do your actions reflect that you are a light of this world? Or does it reflect that you are a follower of Christ? In everything that you do, wherever you are, whenever you are, does the light of God reflect in your actions? Does the light of God reflect in your words, your thoughts, your motives, the way you dress, the way you handle relationship, the way you handle your people if you are in your work, the way you handle your colleagues? Does it reflect that you are a Christian? Does it reflect the light of Jesus Christ in everything that you do? Are you really a follower of Jesus Christ? How many times a week? Do you call yourself a Christian? How many times a week do you call yourself a Christian? Six times a week? Seven times a week? Just one day on a Sunday? <laughs> and the rest of the week, you are of this world. You needed light. You only pre pretend to be a light on Sundays. That means you are artificial light. Yeah? Yeah? If you are only making yourself as a Christian on Sunday, you are not a natural light. You are an artificial light. Sorry, but that's the truth. If you are not, a, if you are not 24/7 a Christian, you are artificial light because your light dims and your light is gone the rest of the days, only a Sunday. And how did you become a follower of Christ? Sorry, this question also uh, hits me when I was preparing this one. 
How did you become a follower of Christ? Did you become a follower of Christ because you recited that creed? That you believe in Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross, and he is Savior, and he is your Savior and God? You just recite that one, and then you became a follower of Christ? Is that how you base your Christianity? And after you recite that one, anyway, if you recite that one wholeheartedly, in your life, is there any changes? Is there any changes? Or you are still the same after you recited that creed. There's no changes in your life. So there's no light in you. As a light of this world, just like Jesus said, he set an example for us to follow. We as light of this world should also set an example to everyone, just like we said earlier. Whenever, wherever you are, at home, school, work, community, anywhere, anytime, 24-7. As follower of Christ, 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As follower of Christ, true follower of Christ, as light of this world, Jesus said that whoever follows him will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus lives in us as we have learned from the past messages. If you have really accepted Jesus Christ, Jesus lives in us. And if you are really a follower of Christ, we became the temple of Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 6, 19, 20, we have learned before that, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? That is when you really accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You just not recited it, but you really accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. If the Holy Spirit lives in you, it will show. It will show. It will reflect everything that you do because the Holy Spirit bears fruit. Remember uh, Galatians 5, 22-23? How many fruits of the Spirit are there now? Eleven? <laughs> yeah. But the fruit of Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness and self-control against such thing there is no law so my brothers and sisters how many fruits of the spirit do you possess in your life right now sorry are you a temple of god does the holy spirit reside in you do you have the fruit of the holy spirit and are you a light of this world so, my brothers and sisters, being a light of the world, this world, those things, those fruits of the Spirit, it shows, it reflects. It reflects, my brothers and sisters. The Holy Spirit dwells in you, and the fruits of the Spirit will show you will become a new creation. Amen? Are you a new creation? Amen. You're old now. You were a new creation before. <laughs> or you're starting to become a new creation right now. But we are a new creation. We are a new creation right now because our old, we are not going back to where we used before. We know that what we have done before, what we were before, we don't go back then because we know. Just like uh, when you were dirty, you changed clothes, Dipuba. You changed clothes, and because those clothes are dirty, you don't put them back anymore. Because if you put them back, still you get dirty. Amen. Just like our life right now. You don't go back then because if you go back then, after you met Jesus, you're going to become dirty again and you are not going to be the light of this world. Physical light, physical light is necessary for physical life. Remember that one? Physical light is necessary for physical life. The earth, the earth this earth would certainly change very rapidly if there were no longer any sunlight. Plants will never move away from the light, and they are said to be a positively phototropic. They are, drawn to, they are drawn to light. In the same way, spiritual light is necessary for spiritual life. Amen? We need spiritual light for our spiritual life. And this can be a good test of our standing in Christ. The believer, the real, the real believer, the true believer, 
will always tend to want toward spiritual things. He will always tend toward fellowship, prayer, always tend towards the Word of God, meditating the Word of God, and the fellowship to our brothers and sisters, and so on. But the unbeliever is the exact opposite. They don't want to do anything else that related to God. Yeah. So, my brothers and sisters, Psalms 100, 105, if you are real Christians, you always have this one. The word is a lamp to guide my feet and light for my path. That is where we take our map. The word of the Lord is our map because it will guide our feet and it will not cause us to stumble and it shows the way. And my brothers and sisters, uh, John 6, 37 says, all those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me will never drive away. It's like the, the plant always goes to the sun, di po ba? I, if you can see, uh, if you put a plant in your house, the, the, the leaves of the plant will always go face towards the sun because it needs the sun. If you are a true Christian, if you are a true follower of Christ, you will go to the spiritual things. Those the Father gives me will always come to me. So the Father, the Father gives us to the Son. So if you are really a follower of Christ, you always follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes, Jesus called us to be the light of this world because this world is in darkness. We take a lamp into a room to dispel the darkness. Likewise, the light of Jesus Christ has to be taken into darkness of sin that engulfs the heart of lives of those who are not following him. That's the condition behind having this light, that we follow him. If we do not follow him, we will not ha have this light. Uh, we will not have this life. We will not have this truth and this eternal life. Just as Jesus came as the light of the world, he commands us to be lights too, just like what we have on the Matthew chapter 5, 14, 16. We see believers depicted as the light of the world. Just like the moon, just like we said earlier, the moon has no light of its own, reflecting the light of the sun. So are the believers to reflect the light of Christ so that all can see in us. The light is evident to others by the good deeds we do in faith and through the power of the Holy Spirit. We can see it from the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Yes, my brothers and sisters, remember, as light of this world, we should also always be ready of the hope that we have. First Peter 3.15, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Our light should not be covered but made obvious for all to see, so that they too will leave the darkness and will come into the light. Amen? Our light should not be covered but made obvious for all to see so that they too will leave the darkness and will come into the light. My brothers and sisters, we should stay in line with the Lord so you will be able to reflect the light. Remember the moon. If the moon is not on the line of the sun, it will not able to reflect its light to earth. Kung nag-hide po, kung there is a solar eclipse, you will see that the, sa the moon will not be... It's not able to reflect its light to the earth, di po ba? And uh, if we stayed in line, you know, my brothers and sisters, this is the last one. <laughs> Romans 13, 12. The night is nearly over, my brothers and sisters. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. The armor of light. So my brothers and sisters, it's like the night is nearly over. That means the darkness of this world is nearly over. And the light of the Lord is soon coming. It's not only the light of the world, but He is coming. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Amen?
Amen. My brothers and sisters, just remember, you are the light of the world. Amen? Amen. Once again, are you the light of the world? Amen. Amen, yes. How many minutes is that? 35 minutes. <laughs> okay, uh, can I call the music team? And uh, <laughs> Thank you. And uh, amen. Let's just pray for, for a bit and let's close. Uh, before we continue, let's just pray and as we prepare. And yes, oh Lord God, thank you again for this day that you have given to us, that you have shown us the way, you have shown us the light, Lord God. Thank you for being the light to us and uh, making us the reflections of your light, Lord God, and uh, using us to be the reflection of your light. Please, Lord, keep us in line. Keep us, Lord God, in your line that we will be able to reflect your light, Lord God. Do not let us stray away. Do not let us be away in your light, Lord God, because we need you. We cannot do anything without you, Lord God. You are our only true help. You are our only true light, Lord God. Please, Lord, do not leave. We know you do not leave us, but please, Lord, do not let us stray away from you, Lord God, because we need you, Lord God. We know we are stubborn. We know we always want to go our own way. We know we think we are better than you, Lord God, but please, Lord God, Help us not to be like this and help us to be more like you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Soundtrack. And let's sing our victory song and let's dance in the presence of the Lord. As David danced.
Hallelujah! It's time to celebrate! 